Hello, hello, we meet again, and yes, it has been a while. So since we last gathered here in this space, I have had a baby. <laughs> yeah, he is three months old as of right now. Um, we're at the beginning of January 2024. His name is Aldrich Soul Alexander, and this podcast is currently dependent upon his his satisfaction and allowing his mother to speak into this device whilst breastfeeding and hopefully going to sleep. (laughs) But we shall see. Um, So motherhood has been a challenge in the most beautiful way. And I'm so grateful for all of the experiences that I've encountered along the way. Um, It actually was quite challenging. I came here with intentions on speaking on something of a matter that had came to my thought. Um, A lot to do with fearing, feeling the emotions of the world and society as we move through the energies of such incredible and impeccable times. The times have become very challenging. Um, The times have become very intimidating. The climate of weather has gotten extreme. The socialization of people has gotten very rogue, we can say, to say the least. Um, But as I came in with with the intentions of speaking on that topic, and speaking on how maybe just a glimmer of hope of filling another person's energy, another person's sadness, another person or group's encounters in the world, instead of us tuning out to that and showing pride and and gratitude for no longer having human empathy and emotions attached to anything supposed outside of ourselves, maybe instead we realize that in this world there is no thing, no person, no one outside of ourselves, but instead we are all yoked here together and everything is a ripple effect and what affects one person on one side of the globe is by nature affecting us here in our situation, your situation, my situation. Everything is a chain of reaction. and Every reaction is an action of a contraction, of a breath, of a life force, of the in and the out, of the source and the creation of all that is. So when we think of that, maybe we'll stop limiting our beliefs to thinking that if we feel anything for those or for situations outside of ourselves, that we are lessened by any means because ultimately, no, we're not lessened. What if that energy, that that second of a thought, that sadness that you feel in your heart for someone who's enduring something a bit more challenging than you, what if that energy of you just taking a moment to feel sends that person the energy to heal? Just some food for thought. But back to where I was going with this is, I was going to talk about that, but instead, I'll give you that. And I'm gonna share a little bit about my pregnancy story, my life, my personal experience here in the world of Tara, not just terrestrial RF. So me and my partner Grant, um, you may know him as the time dealer on Twitter or Instagram as his handle. Um, So we had this beautiful, beautiful um, delivery set up for my pregnancy. I had a midwife throughout the pregnancy, never went to an actual doctor, doctor, except a couple occurrences to where I felt, actually one occurrence where I felt the need just to be kind of checked out. Um, Maybe actually it was two, sorry, Um, because just things of being a bit paranoid, being a first time mother. But yeah, so we had all of these expectations of setting up a pool, having a a water birth here in our home, just pure magic, pure joy. We had um, got a doula to help us and a beautiful human being that we met. And I'm so grateful that we've encountered her. Um, We had so many things, so many ideas, so many things that were set up and established for us to be able to do everything exactly within our control of the way that we wanted, the way I wanted. And sadly, towards the end of my pregnancy, my blood pressure started to spike. It started to get uncontrollably uncontrollably high, excuse me. And I didn't know what to do, ultimately. 
I told myself that no matter what, I would not have my baby at a hospital. The last thing I ever wanted was a C-section, firstly. Second, even just to be at a hospital was bad enough. I didn't want any of that. I wanted the perfect home birth with the perfect situation and the perfect candlelight, having the perfect frequencies in my perfect water bath or birthing pool. And I just wanted it to be the way that it was supposed to be in my head that I had envisioned. My mom came into town or came into state. Um, she lives in Kentucky and she came to Nevada to be here to support me and Grant and our beautiful baby that was on his way. And I just kept getting worse. I was swollen. I had no signs of post, what is it called? Oh. I had no signs of what I had until I had all the signs, but no signs still of like reaching that point of like possibly like stroking out or something like that, right? So come to find out, I did end up having the um, one thing that everybody fears the most, which honestly guys right now it's, it's leaving me the name of it. Um, it is, uh, I wish I could think of the name. But anyway, so I had it, the pregnancy disease, some people call it, which I don't call it a disease, but it can be really bad for you when you have it. And it could risk the life of myself and possibly my son. So I went to the hospital after my blood pressure just spiked and it wouldn't go down and it was uncontrollable and I had no idea what to do. I went with the intentions of having my baby. And the reason I went to the hospital with the intentions of having my baby was because I said I wasn't going to go. I broke down. I cried. I didn't want to do it. I just felt like it was wrong. And then me and Grant decided we were going to pull tarot and just see what happened. What do the cards say? And the cards specifically came out saying life. Life would be with us and I would give birth upon going to the hospital. And that gave me the hope that that was what was truly meant to be. I got to the hospital um, after they did some testing on me and saw my blood pressure was like 150 over something like 200. It was ridiculous. It was way too high. I could have died technically. Um, they were worried about that. So they were like, you're not gonna be leaving here without your baby. And I was like, oh, wow, well, I had no idea. And then I get another little checking from a doctor and the doctor's like, I have to check how far along you're dilated to see if this baby can come naturally. And as much as I wanted to have a natural baby for my birth canal, I was informed that I was not very dilated at all. He was not ready, but my body was literally looking at him like he was an explosive <laughs> waiting to come out. So after a bunch of tears, <sighs> a very fast decision was made and I was okay with it. I wanted my son and I wanted to be a part of his life. So I had to make a decision that was a call out of everything within my control, but it was worth it more than anything I could have ever controlled. So now here we are. I suffer from high blood pressure up until recently. Uh, so bad still to where I had to take blood pressure medicine, which is something I don't love the idea of because I'm very holistic and I like to do things as natural as possible. I had to do it though because my blood pressure was uncontrollable. The first week of post-delivery, post-natal, I guess you could say, I didn't feel good didn't feel good at all but I still managed to take care of my beautiful son and ultimately as time progressed I've gotten a lot better and here we are today to where I'm back making videos and that is actually the most brief synopsis I can give you and I will say being in the hospital I had beautiful people that helped me that worked there at the beginning of it all that I was there but over my stay I started to get really depressed and it was raising my blood pressure even more I had to leave the hospital on a um DN whatever it's called whenever you 
tell them pretty much you're leaving against the medical advice. But I did wait, make sure everything checked out fine with Aldrich. Um, they put him under one of those blue light machines. That was traumatic for me because he was just, I just wanted to hold my baby. And after the trauma of the cesarean, not being able to just hold him after they ripped him out of my body, uh, it was just, it was pretty traumatic. But overall, I wouldn't change anything at all because the beauty of it is him. And the beauty of it is me. And the beauty of it is that I am alive and here and healthy with my baby. And me and his father are able to take care of him in the best way that we can learn and know each and every single day of our lives. And he is just the most beautiful and loved present of gift of presence I have ever encountered in my life. So I give full gratitude to have him in my life. So yeah. I wanted to share that experience and just kind of give you all a little bit of an idea of how we got here from there. It's been a while since I've made content and because of that, I just did kind of feel like maybe it's owed to you guys to I'll let you know what happened. So yeah, um, I'm really grateful to have had a team of people that were here for me and able to do everything that they could to make sure that my baby and I were born healthy and happy. And I did try to think of the name of the thing that I have. I just can't remember it, guys. But I know that there is a name. <laughs> And um, if you are familiar with pregnancy and issues with pregnancy, I'm sure you know what that name is. So there's no need for me to sit here and try to find it and tell you. But um, yeah, so I do feel that Aldrich will be our only child. Um, I know that I can't control everything as we know that even more now after having to completely surrender myself to the universe and accept and understand that it was out of my control. Um, but if it is within my control, um, Aldrich will be our son and he does not necessarily need a sibling. <laughs> but if he does end up having one, then so be it. Yeah. So I just want to thank you guys for sticking with me throughout the years, being here with me, wanting to hear my story, wanting to come into my space and encounter me, sharing with you. And I want you to know that there's so much more content of just the authentic form of me coming in my purest, most rawest essence of my energy. Because after having Aldrich and going through nine months of being pregnant, and not really so much feeling like creating content. I've discovered that the reason I didn't feel like creating content isn't because I don't like making content. It's because the content that I was providing, maybe not so much with my podcast, but like my TikTok and things like that, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted. I want to do things that are going to touch people in a way to make them think and make them see for themselves their own divine answer, plan, mission, whatever it may be. I want to be able to share my vulnerabilities with you guys. I want to be able to share love. I want to also be able to share darkness. And I want to also show people that it's okay to feel and feeling for others is not a weakness. And in fact, it's one of the biggest strengths we could have. So that's why I opened this podcast today up with that on that note and i just really really hope and pray that we can all be able to just feel for one another and heal one another so yeah that's it for this message aldrich's starting to get a little bit fussy on me um so yeah thank you for listening thank you for being here please remember to like share subscribe and follow me on all of my platforms um you can find me on youtube Twitter, also known as X, Instagram, um, Spotify here, and somewhere else I feel like I should be mentioning. And I do have post-pregnancy brain, by the way, so bear with me. But yeah, so that's it for now. Thank you for being here, and don't forget to like.
I will be back soon. And until then, wishing you a wonderful and incredible momentum of now. Bye-bye.